Hi everyone. So I recently bought myself an HEQ5. This is a really, really popular mount for uh, astrophotographers. So when people buy their first equatorial mount, this is uh, one that they choose a lot. So what I wanted to do today was go over the basic setup of a mount like this uh, for an imaging session. If you have a different kind of mount, um, the setup will be very similar, so hopefully this will help you too. So I'm going to go over the basic setup today, and then I'm going to do a few videos on different ways that you can operate the mount. I'm also going to do some videos on guiding with PHD2. I'm going to show you how to also set up PEC training on um, an HEQ5. And I'd also like to do a video on some imaging acquisition software. I use Nina, so I'll be showing you that. So anyway, hopefully this will be of some help to you. My name is Glenn, and you're watching Astrobloke. So the first thing you need to do is have a nice firm base for your tripod. This isn't actually where I would image from, but this was the best place for me to show you uh, what you need to do. Um, these are actually legs for an EQ6R Pro, and that's why I've got this orange thing on top here. This is an adapter, so the HEQ5 will fit on top. You almost be won't have that bit, and you'll just have a, a north pin there. Once you've got your tripod in the position that you want it, roughly facing uh, north, I've got a bubble level on this adapter which is quite good to give you a level but I always check it with a normal spirit level and you just want to make sure that the mount is not tilted in any direction and it's at a nice flat level on both planes. Next we're going to fit the head. So with the HEQ5 head in place, you can then just very gently do up those azimuth bolts. And now what we're gonna do is just secure the head to the tripod. So you'll notice here I've got a nice matching saddle on here. These are both by G-Optic. And I'll put a link above me as a video on these upgrades that I've added to the mount. So a much nicer saddle, but I only need this to uh, get this to fit on the EQ6 legs, which are two inch, so they're much sturdier than the legs that come with an HEQ5. So maybe worth thinking about. Right, so once the uh, mount is uh, put onto the tripod, we're gonna get the leg spreader. So this is the uh, leg spreader. So when we do this up, this will, cause things to move about a little bit. Sometimes what I like to do is once it's uh, feeling tight, I like to just, here we go, it's pushing them out a little bit here. And then I like to just give them a little push, make sure they're there, and then just take up the slack. Don't go over the top with your nuts. I mean, make sure things are firm but some people really over tighten stuff and this you know this stuff will break if you over tighten it so there's no need to do that just make sure it's nice and firm okay so now that the uh, mount is uh, facing north and uh, the leg spreader is on we can bring out the bar for the counterweights take off the button at the bottom and we're going to put some counterweights on before we put our scope on Again, you don't need to over tighten things, but do make sure they're done up because you don't want those weights slipping. So for the rig I'm putting on, this is all I need. If 
and once the weights are on get that button back in just in case they should slip because you don't want one of these falling off and damaging your foot okay now we're ready to get the scope so with the counterweights in place I would always put them on first before putting on the scope you can then put on your scope And you can roughly check balance, but you need to really do balance once everything's connected. So it's a bit top heavy, but I know that once I connect the cables that may change. So I'm just going to get all of the cables connected up and then we'll jump to the balancing. So now that everything is connected, we can now attempt to balance the mount. And I'm going to start on the RA axis. So just supporting everything, release your axis and then just have a little feel with it. Now I've used this mount many times so I kind of know the weights that I need here. You mostly have two of the larger weights. I bought um, a point, uh, the 35 um, Skywatcher set which has got a three and a half kilogram and a one and a half kilogram because I've got an even smaller rig that I use. And I just find that these two here are perfect balance for this, for this scope. Okay, so now I'm happy with that. We're now gonna do the declination balance. Now this was actually very stiff when I bought this uh, rig. Now that I've hyper-tuned it, and that will be another video I'll show you, um, it's as smooth as anything, okay. So that's very top heavy. So what I'm gonna do is just bring that back here so I can support it. Move that back down a bit. That was back heavy then. I've made a big mistake. I've left the caps on. And I know that might not seem a lot, but uh, that is extra weight, especially with the William Optics, because it's uh, aluminium. It uh, has got a bit of weight to it. Okay, that's, uh, that's now tail heavy because I've taken them off. So make sure everything is where you're gonna have it with your imaging. That's much better. Okay and that's sitting nicely, so that's balanced very nicely. There's one other balance that you do need to check, and some people don't do this one, but it is important. You need to hold the scope vertically and see whether it falls to the left or right. Um, if it does, that could be, you, I've got an autofocuser on here, I've got a filter wheel, if anything's slightly off to the side, it could pull it down. Um, ways around that, if you've got, um, certain scopes can be twisted in the rings, this one can't be very easily. Um, and what I might do is just add a small bit of weight to one side or the other to counterweight it up. But this is, I've actually got this, uh, this nice and balanced, so there's no problem with that. Okay, so the next thing to do is to find the home position for this uh, setup. So to get an accurate home position, we're going to start with the RA axis. So we need a spirit level on the top there, and get this totally perfectly horizontal. Once we're there, make sure that the dial is on 12. Take this off so it doesn't fall on the floor. And then we move this back, watching that dial until we get to six o'clock, or just number six on the dial. Once we're there, we can lock that down, and that's the RA axis in the home position and now we're going to move on to the declination axis. So with your mount in the uh, home position turn your declination to the side and we need a spirit level again to get this nice and uh, level.
So find a level there to get it nice and uh, horizontal. Once we have the declination horizontal, we then turn this dial to zero. Just gonna lock that off. And then releasing the deck clutch, move it back to 90. And do up the declination clutch. And that's your mount now, loaded up, balanced, and set in the home position. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna connect the handset and some power, and I'm gonna go through a few settings for you to start your imaging. So this is the handset that comes with the Skywatcher. I don't use this, I actually use my PC to control the mount, but um, I will go into that on a separate video. When you turn the mount on, this will come up with initialising and give you a warning not to look at the sun. If you've set this up before, it will actually ask whether you want to start from the part position or not, and I'll show you that afterwards. If you say yes, it will just carry on from where you last left off with your last alignment. If you say no, it will start a new one. So, there's the warning. And we can first start off by longitude and latitude. You can look online, there are apps as well that will give you accurately your longitude and latitude for where you are. And you can set your time zone, set your elevation. If you need to make any changes, just use these arrows to scroll across and then you can punch the numbers in that you need. Then you need to put in your date make sure that you check it is month then day not day then month because it's easy to get them the wrong way around that's july and then we want the time so i've got 10 49 so i'm uh, 30 so i'm going to put 10 49 40 watch my watch and as it clicks to 40 i'll push enter and now we've got a nice synchronised time. Daylight saving, yes or no. And it'll give you then Polaris position. So if you want to polar line your scope through the uh, polar scope, it will show you what position Polaris should be in. There are many apps as well that will show this for you. So it's now saying would we like to begin alignment, yes or no. We're going to say yes because we're saying this is like a, an initial setup. And we've got options, if we use these down and up arrows at the bottom here, we've got one, two or three star alignment. I would suggest you do a three star alignment because that will give you the most accuracy. But um, I don't actually do a star alignment with my mount because I control it through the PC and I use plate solving for it to learn where it is. Again, I will show you all of that in my next video. If I just push one star alignment and it will give us um, a star for it to slew to. If you're not happy with that star, you could always pick another one just by pushing up and down arrows on here. If I say yes, it will now slew to where it thinks that star is. When it's got there, what we need to do is center that star in the field of view. So if you're using a DSLR, you can use live view for that. If you're using a PC with acquisition software, you might use, there can be live views available on them. Uh, APT has that. Nina, you can do short exposures and see where it is, or you could be using an eyepiece because you're viewing. But what you're going to be doing, once it's got to the place it needs to be at, is we're going to be centering the star in the field of view. We're going to be doing that by using these buttons here, and it says it here, use arrow buttons to control to eyepiece. If we want to move the scope and it's moving too slowly, we can push rate, and then we can select between 1 and 9 for different speeds. I would say 5 or 6 is a good speed. It's not too fast, but it will get the star moving. So using these buttons, get the star to the center of the uh, field of view. And when you're happy, press enter. It says alignment successful. And that scope is now, it's now got an idea of where it's looking in the night sky. From there, we can then, if we press object, we can then decide on what we want to look at. So there's lots of things about. 
So we could go for something, if I go into the Messier catalogue, 101, which is the Pinwheel Galaxy, because I know that's up in the sky at the moment. Press enter, and what it will do is it will say view object, say yes, and it will go to where it thinks M101 is. If you've got a good polar alignment, and you've done a good star alignment, then your accuracy for pointing will be fairly good and it could get it straight in the center. You may need to adjust it slightly. This is one of the big advantages of running your rig through a PC and having plate solving to your uh, arsenal. Plate solving takes all the guesswork out, takes, uh, takes, a, takes an image of where it's looking, solves that image so it knows exactly where it's uh, pointing at and then can make the small adjustments needed to send to a target. So that's now on M101 and uh, you may need to make some small adjustments but now this would be good for either photographing or viewing. Once we've finished and we want to finish the night if we press escape we can then push utility and if I scroll down it's got a few options but one of them is park scope. Press enter park to home position which is where we started and we should always finish the night by doing this park the scope to the home position and then switch it off now that the uh, the scope is set up what I'll show you will happen once you've done this it's saying you can turn the power off I'm now going to put the power back on and if you've got a scope that's already set up and you're using it in the same place like your back garden you don't need to go through the whole procedure again you can start the scope from the park position all it will ask you for is the uh, time of day and the date to put in you won't need to go longitude and latitude it will keep all of that information there if you say no it will start the whole process again so if you're sh shooting from a different site um, or you just like to do the alignment all over again from scratch, you can then select uh, number two, no. And that's the basics of the handset. There's a lot of features in this handset that you can uh, have a look through, um, but that's the uh, basics for setting up and getting your scope to work. So that's the basics of setting up your uh, mount, uh, getting it uh, balanced, getting it on the tripod, making sure everything is in position, setting up the home position, and then some basic uh, controls on the handset. I'm going to do a separate video on how to polar align. Uh, you can use the polar scope, or you can buy things like the iPolar or the uh, Pole Master, which fit in here and do a fabulous job. Um, I use a program called SharpCap, which I find works brilliantly and it's like £10 a year to subscribe so it's not overly expensive and I get great polar alignment with that. As I've said before, I control my mount through a PC. I use Nina as my acquisition software. I use SharpCat for my polar alignment and I also guide with PHD2 using this uh, guide scope with a guide camera on the back. So what I'm going to do is another video showing how to set up the mount through uh, your PC so that you can control it with that um, and using plate solving to find uh, objects in the sky and for this to map where it's looking. It's a much easier system once you get your head around uh, how to use the programs. They may seem complicated at first but they're actually not that bad. All that remains for me to say is if you do have any questions about what I've covered today, please put them in the comments section below. I apologise if I've missed any uh, points out, but if you ask me, I'll do my utmost to answer any questions. And uh, until next time, please take care and clear skies.